Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard. If you've watched my channel from any length of time, you'll know that I like to make my own props and everything for my videos, and I like doing movie and TV show guns. Uh, I'm working on another video right now, kind of getting parts together for it. Sometimes these things take me a while to make the parts and uh, to acquire the parts and pieces and accessories and everything. And the next one I want to work on kind of is Bat Masterson. Now this is Bat Masterson from the TV show that ran from 1958 to 1961, something like 108 episodes of it. Ran for three seasons and starred Gene Barry as Bat Masterson. Now it's kind of a uh, takeoff from the actual Bat Masterson, but this one is a little fancier, a little snazzier, and uh, kind of a different romanticized western version of it. Uh, he dressed pretty snazzy and he carried... An 1873 single action army with a four and three quarter inch barrel, nickel plated, but his had stag grips on it. Now, this is from Pieta. This is the gunfighter version, and it has these really cheap plastic checkered grips on it. I do not like them at all. I don't like the feel of them. I don't like the look of them. And I need stag grips if I'm going to do the proper uh, Bat Masterson video. Now, I looked online trying to find a good set of stag grips, kind of like the ones that Gene would have had in the, in the TV series. And I either found them that were kind of close, they were stag grips but didn't look just like his, or I found some that were close to looking like his but were pretty pricey, at probably about a third of the price that I actually paid for the gun itself, I could get those grips. And I really, I like making my own stuff for one, to save a little bit of money. Of course, if you factor in my time, I've blown it way out. But I've, I've made a few sets of grips. You've seen some of the videos on them. Some of them you haven't seen. But uh, Santee from Arizona Ghost Riders sent me a link to a website called Guitar Parts and More. Now, Guitar Parts and More sells ivory. They sell mammoth ivory. They sell different types of bone and everything. You can make your own parts. They do have some finished parts for musical instruments. But one of the things they sell are these right here. These are resin ivory blanks for specifically made for making gun grips now he does sell the real stuff too if you want to buy that but it's going to be quite a bit pricier than these and i got two sets from david david warther is the owner of guitar parts and more and david is a master artist he does absolutely beautiful work working with real ivory he gave me a set of half inch thick ones and a set of three quarter inch thick ones and I'm going to use these, the three quarter inch thick ones, to make a set of grips with either a Liberty Eagle or the Mexican Eagle or maybe both of them on there. But the thinner set I think I'm going to use to make a set of jigged stag grips. Now jig means that they're not actual stag but they take like a, a round rotary burr and kind of carve the bark, you know, you call it, uh, the look of the stag grips into it. So I'm going to use these to make it. Now I went over to David's shop and David cut these blanks for me and he explains a little bit about what they sell, the materials they make and supply to people all over the world that make different parts like this. This is a set of the resin ivory S grain, the higher grade grain. They have the regular ivory grain in the material itself. These will finish up to be just absolutely gorgeous gun grips. And this this can polish up just like nice high polishes, gloss and everything? Polishes up just like real ivory does. You'll see yourself in the finish. It takes a buff finish. There are instructions on our website that tell about how to work the material and how to get a high polish. It's all done with conventional tools, conventional equipment. Um, how does it carve? If you're using carving tools on it, regular, can you use regular wood carving tools on it and everything? And... Is it? Do you have to worry about things like, uh, like when you're carving wood, where you your tool will catch in the grain or anything? Yeah, this or? is actually much more dense than than wood, so uh, this works more like real ivory in that you're using saws and files. You're not using knives and chisels. Okay. So you're using saws to rough it out, files to shape it. Sands beautifully with sandpaper. Takes a high polish on a buffing wheel, and. It, just regular buffing wheels with white jeweler's rouge will bring that polish right up. You only have to sand to about 400 grit. 400 will be your last grit sanding. You want to sand with wet dry sandpaper, then take it right to that buffing wheel and it'll polish right up. Do you need to wet sand it? No. Just That's the, Well, um, I, I, I do not. I just use dry sand. Okay. And it'll buff out after 400 grit? Oh, yeah. Oh, it'll wow. buff right up. You're... you're 
If you've got a decent buffing wheel, it'll take all the scratches out from 400 and leave you with a mirror-like finish. Okay. Absolutely. So this is the S grade. We also have the R grade. We have this available in black as well. And then we have the high density ultra white, which is 30% um, more dense than the resin, regular resin ivory. And it has, um, it has a very white finish to it. It doesn't have a regular ivory grain. It has a real nice, pretty subtle grain. We wouldn't really call it a true ivory grain as you have with the S grade. Now, this will not uh, split or yellow or anything over time, will it? We don't know how, lo how long it'll take to do any of that. Okay. Because, um, this is a fairly new material. Um, the idea of having a spun polyester goes back, you know, 100 years, um, and it holds up really well over time. This is a newer version that should even last longer and be stronger because it has, it has um, resin fibers. Um, I'm trying to think of the right word. It has supporting fibers in it. It's not a true spun polyester. So it has reinforcing fibers in it that give it extra strength and durability. Can you stain it? Yes. Okay. It There's will... instructions on my website that also tell how you can stain it, age it. Basically, you're using leather dyes. Okay. Yeah. And I have plenty of leather dyes. <laughs> so I do some um, leather work. Our website is guitarpartsandmore.com. In the upper right-hand column of the website, there's a little button that says Information. And there's a drop-down menu there, and there's an article called Tips for Artisans. And in the Tips for Artisans, it tells everything about how to work all of the materials we provide. The resin ivories, the real ivory, the, the ancient mammoth ivory, as well as different, different other materials like we provide horn and so forth. So that article will address all of these features, all of these um, ways in which to sand it and polish it, how to use different dyes and so forth. So here's your resin ivory S grade, and here's the Q4 material. We develop Q4 material specifically for Q makers. It's used in all the different parts of a Q stick. There are four different areas of application of real ivory in a Q stick, so we call this Q4 because it serves for all four of those purposes. And then we started noticing that gun grip makers and knife makers like it, so we now sell it for grip panels and so forth. This is 30% more dense than the regular resin ivory. It's very white, takes a beautiful polish, has a real nice pretty grain to it. It's very nice little swirling grain. People have been real happy with the Q4 as well. Well, the Q4 uh, polish and finish and everything, just like the other stuff there, it does. still All of 400 these grit. Take the same same type of finish, same high polish. It's all done with the same kind of sandpaper files and saws and so forth. Okay. So the workability is comparable, even though this is a little bit more dense. Yeah, and we also offer this in hunter orange and in black. So you have a little bit of variety there. This is a woolly mammoth test that weighs in at 120 pounds. And it's a very nice size, very solid tusk. This is the natural bark coating on the outside. It's taken on the colors of the soil. This came out of a gold mine in 1982 and uh, was in private hands over all these years until I purchased it just recently. And I'll actually be cutting this tusk up to make violin parts and guitar parts, some gun grips and so forth. You never know what's on the inside of a tusk until you cut it open. So how good the tusk is on the inside, we really don't know until the day we cut it open. It does look good. I do think it'll be the high quality that will make gun grips. Now, normally the quality that makes gun grips comes out of Russia. That's where the best mammoth ivory is. And these are a set of uh, grip panels for single action army out of mammoth ivory. And this is Russian material. It's almost as white or Really, it is as white as elephant ivory. It takes the same high polish. These are very difficult to come by. That is, to get this quality, it's really not very common at all. And so we end up uh, selling these to uh, very um, noted gun grip makers, and these sell for $1,000 a set. So now that I'm just kind of beginning into this, uh, I probably will not be getting the mammoth ivory or the real ivory gun grip panels. I'm going to try my hand at the uh, synthetic stuff. So these are usually cut closer to 600 thousandths. Yeah, that's, that's five, 580. And then 
like these I just cut. We also sell them at, at the heavy duty thickness. I, I did see that on the website. For Target. So that's that's three quarter inch there. And then this is your, you'll finish at half inch on the R grade. So would you rather have the thicker or the thin? Uh, I would like to try a set of the thicker ones just okay. because I want to be yeah. able to do that kind of heavy relief type yeah. um, design in it with the, either the Mexican Eagle or the... Um, yeah the liberty eagle whichever one it is i yeah. try to do no, now how do you transfer a design onto that if if you're not a, a great artist sometimes it's um you know i can follow a tracing or something like that and i i have done some artwork in the past not so much anymore it's been years since i've done any drawing or anything but if i want to transfer a design on there what's a good way to get it from paper to the actual I, material to be honest with you i don't know i don't do that right my, my work is different than, than that so i don't have an answer um i imagine there are techniques um to get the image transferred but i i don't do that yeah all right so there's a little bit of uh my trip out to david warther's shop gun, guitar parts and more i got guns on my mind all the time anyways uh it is a really cool material to work with. I have noticed that it is easy to mark on. I did ask David about um, transferring images on there so that you can do your carving and stuff. And David is more of a true artist, where I am more of a craftsman, I guess you'd say. He doesn't. He he works directly on the medium, and he's good with that. Me, I like to be a little more cautious and plan things out because I do not have the artistic skills that he does. Now, one of the nice things about these guns, the Pietas that come with the really cheap old plastic grips that I don't like, is that the grips come apart. Even though this is a two-piece grip, it is actually a one-piece grip and a three-piece grip all combined into one thing. So you've got the spacer piece in the middle there, and you've got your two grip panels on it. And when you take that spacer piece out, it just fits in these little pins right here, little holes. You've got a pattern, the actual size pattern. Now, I did notice that this grip, the outside of it, fits really well on this frame. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, I want the right side grip first. That's the one I'm going to work on. I can lay it right out on there and position it where I want to. And this material takes pencil marks really well. So what I will do is trace around here with a pencil. And I sanded this down with some 80 grit to get the heavy tool marks off of it from the bandsaw. And then I hit it with a little bit of 220. And it is really smooth after 220 grit sandpaper. So I imagine after the 400 and polishing it out, it should polish to a mirror shine like he says. One of the things, another thing that I noticed about this stuff is... It uh, creates a lot of dust when you're sanding on it. So you're going to want to be really careful with that. There's the pencil mark on there. It shows up great. Maybe not on camera, but for me sitting here looking at it, I can see it just fine. There's a lot of dust that's created with this, and it really takes me back to when I was quite a bit younger and worked at a boat plant down in Florida. And uh, it's a polyester resin, so the smell brought back a lot of memories for me. But it's, I think it's going to be a really easy material to work with. And what I will do is I will take this out on the saw. I'm going to do it outside because it does create a lot of dust. When I go to do the final sanding and finishing and everything, I might do that in here and set up a little um, a dust collection system for it. And I'll show you how I do that. Really pretty simple. A lot of people that do airbrushing set it up that way. But I'm going to give this stuff a try. I think it's going to be a great material to work with. Maybe a little easier than wood. Maybe not. I don't know. I could be mistaken. But anyways, let's get busy. Okay, it is freezing out, so I'm going to do this in the, this is the feed room, tech room, whatever you want to call it, storage room, junk room, uh, in the barn. So I've got this stored out here. It's too cold outside and snowy and all that good stuff. So I'm going to do a little bit of sanding in here. I do have a rest spreader on because this stuff is going to kick up a lot of dust. I'm going to get it shaped to fit the frame of the revolver. That way I can do the rest of it. I could do it with files if I wanted.
All right, that's the first part you want to fit up, where it fits up into the frame and the grip frame of the revolver. You want to get that in there nice and snug so there's no slop or anything in it. And then you need to take and trace the backside. Now I cut this pretty darn close, so I've got to be careful with it. And I'm going to trace from the backside, that way it fits the frame just like it's supposed to. And this line still will not be exact, but it'll be as close as I can get without uh, really overdoing it. And it is a three-dimensional object, so I've got, got to make sure I get it all the way around where it needs to be. Now I can do a little more shaping. That's the actual side of my grip frame there. And I actually, I smoothed this side down, which is the outside. I need to smooth the back side down because that's where it's going to fit tightly up against the frame. Okay, so you can see it's very dusty, but it shapes really well. It's really easy to take off too much if you're not careful. Uh, that's probably as much as I'm going to do on the uh, power tool there and uh, get my hands dusted off and see how it fits on the, uh, the gun. Whew, what a mess. Okay, so I got it fitting pretty close. It still needs quite a bit more shaping, but I did cut it a little closer to the, uh, the frame than I wanted to. But it's a, a neat material. It, like I said, it sands really well. It feels really nice. It's good and dense. It cuts harder than wood. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the other one cut out. And then I'm getting in where it's warm. And I'm going to do, uh, do some final finishing then. Okay, there's a reason I did not want to do this in the house, in the basement, in my studio. Because this is a tremendous amount of dust. I think it's actually causing my uh, sander there to have a little, few little issues. Um, but I've got both of them roughed out, and they're close enough to do by hand now. So that's what I'm going to do. I will do the hand sanding part in the house, um, even though I don't really want to, because even hand sanding is still pretty dusty. But I got them shaped about where I want them, and I think they're going to fit pretty nicely on here. Put both of them on there and just kind of get a feel of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like the way that feels. Now, I still got to shape the bottoms of them. They get kind of tapered away, um, kind of upward on the back of the pistol there. And there's still got to be quite a bit done to get it closer to the frame without going beyond. I don't want the frame to stick out past it, but um, I do want it to be a nice, smooth transition. And I don't want to scratch up the finish on the... Um, the revolver, so I'm going to get these things in the house and get to working on them.
All right, I would say that is pretty glossy right there. There might still be a few little spots on it here and there, but um, it's not a big deal. They're probably going to get scratched up with a little bit of use anyways. All right, I want to give another little shout out to Guns of the West. Uh, this is Dustin's store. He does another channel on uh, YouTube, Guns of the West. And this stuff right here, this is the bullet lube. And one of the things I did with it, I use it on here. Of course, I don't need to use it on this gun, but... I took and put a nice little coating of that on the inside of the uh, back strap on the frame just to make sure that when I put the epoxy on there, especially when I did the, the second half of it, glued it on there and clamped it, there's going to be squeeze out. So when I squeeze that down on there, that epoxy is going to go out and it peeled off of here like nothing. Now regular epoxy will stick to things and uh, usually once it's stuck there, it'll stay there. So uh, put a little bit of that on there first really made a world of difference it just it came right off no problems whatsoever so let's get the grips back in the frame here and we'll get them put back on the revolver just three screws on there you got to watch there's a little spring in there up at the top there you want to make sure that doesn't come out because I think there's a detent or a ball or something behind there I can't remember but you just want to make sure that doesn't come out Get all three of them started first before you go tighten anything down. You don't need to hammer down on them. Now this thing, I tried to get these grips as close to the frame as I could. Maybe I could have done a little bit more on the left side. And I can still sand on these some more. I just have to repolish it once I'm done. But um, my whole intention of making these grips was I was going for the Bat Masterson gun, which was a stag grip. But now that I got these things shaped... To fit the gun and everything and polished up I, I can't take a dremel to these things and, and cut that bark in there like it would be on the stag grip so um, that's gonna stay just like that those are some really good looking grips there and I fit them really close to the frame I like I said I could do just a little bit more in a couple spots but that is way better than the factory ones they feel really nice and they look really nice too. All right, guys, there it is. This is my first pair of resin ivory grips, uh, handmade from the little blanks I got from Guitar Parts and More, David Warther. Um, this is my first time working with this material. I've done some wood grips you've seen, and this wasn't really intended to be a, a grip making video, but this stuff is really a fantastic material to work with. From what I'm told, and I have not handled a lot of true ivory grips on uh, revolvers, but from what I'm told, this is almost indistinguishable from the real deal. Uh, it polishes up nicely. It is easy to work with. Uh, files, saws, sandpaper is, is the ideal tools. You can't carve it like wood. It chips out pretty uh, easily. But if you're using uh, files and sandpaper and stuff like that, it works great. It is a pretty easy material to work with. Um, it's not like balsa wood. It's not going to sand that easy. But... If you're really careful with it and take your time with it, you can get a fantastic finish with this stuff, a fantastic fit on your revolver. I could probably do just a little bit more, and I may a little bit later on, who knows. But right now, these things feel great. They look great. They're nice, solid grips. They're not like that cheap plastic stuff that they put on it from the factory. Um, this this is really nice stuff. I, I, I can't say more about it. It's nice, nice stuff. Anyways, uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below to take you to guitarpartsandmore.com if you want to check out this stuff. They're not terribly expensive either. They run about 35 bucks a set, I think. It depends on the thickness you get, and it depends on the, the grade that you get. He has different grades for different things. And if you want to get some mammoth ivory, they're a little more pricey, but uh, that stuff would really look good. And if it works anything like this, I probably still never get any. That's a lot of money. Uh, but anyways, good material, really nice. Polishes up nicely, and I hand polish this. You can machine polish it, and it'll be probably even better. Uh, hit it with a little bit of 1,000 grit sandpaper, polish it a little bit, and then you can see if you've got any missed spots, anything that's uneven. Work with this stuff outside in the sunlight if you can, because you can really get a good uh, look at what it's shaping up to be like. Don't go by your feel. Go by look and do it in really good light and... It'll, it'll do a great job. Nice stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching the Small Caliber Arms Review. If you could, reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos. Hit this one over here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.